hope you're keeping well, mate. Black, yeah, not too bad. How are you, Ronan? You're all right. All good, all good. Um, yeah. So we've done the first podcast, um, in regards to the Telford grooming gangs, and it done quite well in regards to views and numbers and stuff. And, um, as I say, listen, I don't do these podcasts for views and to get massive numbers and stuff. I actually do them because I want to know about certain situations. And that first podcast, mate, that blew my mind in regards to what you were telling me regard and, and you know victims being murdered um you know how they operated the length that they were operating the police corruption but there's a few more topics in regards to this and obviously you want to talk about a few things and there's a few questions i have in regards to the topic the tell for grooming gangs um so the first question i'm going to just start off with a question for you right tommy robinson so recently tommy robinson has been on the Central Club podcast, and he actually came across quite well. And he talked about his regrets and about certain things that um, that he, you know, that he done. Like he feels like he's been, he was used by the elites. He was like he, he was he came into this very conspiratorial mind, and he says actually, if anything, um, uh, uh, we could use the help of of them of our Muslim brothers and sisters because these people aren't corrupted by the elites and he thinks that he was used as a pawn in that situation to divide the country and um, what do you make of him saying that and do you think he's using that to cop out this sort of little bit of light or um, is that noise again or do you uh, think do you think that he's, me, he's generally me, empathetic towards the islamic community to me personally um the the, the way that he's delved into um, Islam and the religious side um, of the Pakistani Muslim gangs and as Islam as a whole, I, I, I felt that he's picking at a religion as such because, to be honest with you, the, the Pakistani grooming gangs right if he's trying to use islam as an excuse um for the grooming gangs to um grape and abuse young girls and he's saying that's where it's originated from from their religion um saying that they're within the islam community anyway um it was stated that he married a girl at six and um had sex with her at nine and I, I, I honestly think that he's he's gone too deep into that because the, what he's saying there, right? He's blaming a religion of Islam as an excuse for the Muslim grooming gangs to groom young girls. Mm. Right now, what about the white rapists and the white abusers? Right? What's he gonna say? Christianity's got to do with why they um, groomed vulnerable young girls. So he's gone too deep, he's gone too deep into the religion. If, to be honest with you, if he had kept all that about Islam out of it, more people would have looked at him from a different light and a different point of view um, as regards to that. I, I disbelieve that Islam is to blame for these pakistani muslim gangs for grooming young girls the reason why i i i i think that is we're dealing with ind individuals at the pakistani community now if that's true what tr believes it's all to do with islam then why isn't each and every pakistani man in the world doing exactly the same that's how I can put away from his thoughts and ideas um, into the grooming gangs, the Pakistani grooming gangs in Telford. You can't say Islam's produced these Pakistani men to groom young girls. Because I, on the other hand, will have to tell you, us white men out there that are grooming young girls, and there are gangs of white men, white English men, that are grooming young girls is he gonna say that it's christianity that's drawing them to rape grape 
and abuse young girls because he will have to, you know, to keep it 50 50. Now, that's where I say he's gone too far into these lamps. Can I, can I sort of just react to that a wee bit though? So the first thing you have to look up, look into is well, how what is the percentage of uh, the Islamic community in England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, and the Republic of Ireland? What what is the percentage of them? So if they take up a low number and they they hold a high number of sort of grip, then that's a red flag. Right now, I don't know the full statistics in that, but if they if it's sort of an average number for the for the population of them, then it's not so much a red flag. So. There's always going to be a higher proportion of sort of say your your average white Christians in England, Scotland, Wales, and Ireland that has a higher rate of grip because there is more of those people. So essentially, there's going to be more um, there's going to be more of, of a percentage in that area. Um, you get what I'm saying, anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, I, I wouldn't look at that. I need to I need to see the statistics of what is the statistics of that group of people that have got grape charges that have been accused of grape that have done that have spent time in prison because of the grape so th does that make sense and another thing i i, I sort of so see, I, 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 see, I, I believe religions i think islam religion in the telford grooming gang case I, I, I say it's got nothing to do with Islam. Does it not state though in the Quran? And this is just because I know in the in the Bible it has you know, about stone and women. There's the Old Testament, there's the New Testament, and I think all these books have been doctored, like they've sort of been doctored to sort of help the governments sort of uh, control the population. That's just my opinion. <laughs> but in regards to the Quran, does it not state that um, the that the Prophet Muhammad actually did get with a very young girl and sort of sort of, as i say once again apologies i'm just i'm just asking the question here but does it not say that in that book and that it's that it was okay yeah, to do it, that? It, it does say that yeah so for, he, he, hence, he, so, married, he married a yeah so, the six-year-old and then slept with her when she was nine now that's no, but see, 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 this is where i section myself away from tr but that's well, what we have to say. We, we, we have this, to, is the, what, this is the politics. Now, I would say this to TR2 at the same time, right? Because I believe that what you're dealing with with Pakistani Muslim gangs, right, are lonely old dirty men that are looking for sex and somebody's making money. Now, I, I've, I've read, I've seen a couple of TV programs and at the end of this, I'll tell you a program to watch, right? And and it gives you more insight into the minds of the paedophile, right? Now, I believe it's born in you. It's not something that you could go to a mosque and learn how to be a paedophile. It's actually born in you from birth. Um after watching this program it's it's born in you right that's why so many pedophiles will tell you they can't change if they were going to be honest with you right the pedophile themselves will tell you they can't change because it's born in them it's mm -hmm. not something that you could pass on to me or a mosque could pass on to me this is this is where i make the distance between me and tr's thoughts about it all like the catholic I, I, church the catholic church basically yeah, yeah. I, I would take away the islamic side to it because a pedophile isn't about a religion he's trying but to make it steve, around the <coughs> steve can i just say this though and i have to say this i have to state this right so in regard right so if you have a book and it says that the so the the prophet in that book in that in that book that you that you read by is doing that. That sort of gives people the go ahead in their brains to yeah, do it because, percent, because their percent, sort of prophet. Percent, that, in regards to the Catholic Church, I have to say, in regards to the Catholic Church, right? In the book, um, uh, I think now don't quote me on this here. It says a man should not lie with another man. They're talking about uh, gay people now originally i do believe it actually said a man should not lay with a child now the thing about the catholic church is 
they had access to so many children, right? That naturally, if you were a pedo, you would want to uh, be a priest because you had access to so many uh, vulnerable children because basically nuns looked after them. They were homeless kids. So that's why so many pedos went into that area and that sort of career as a priest because they had access to children. That's a different topic, though, because that's an infiltration of pedos. And in, in regards to the Islamic thing, I know under under no stretch of the imagination am I back on Tommy Rob, Robinson because I do believe that this man uh, did at one stage have very racist tendencies and he was linked to some very heavy sort of uh, white groups, which I disagree with. But if, he, if you're going to call a spade a spade here, if you have a book and it says in that book that the that and your profit in that book is uh, going with children and having sexual relations with children, then naturally the people that's following that book and that's reading through that book, that's sort of teaching that book and preaching those scriptures, they will sort of have that in their head that that's okay to do. Now, do I... 90% of these people don't go by that, though. And I, I don't believe... I think the vast majority of the decent, hard-working muslims of of the of the uk and ireland they do not go by that book because there is the law of the land and the law of the land says you the age of consent is 17 years of age so um i do believe that there's that now i i have to say it do i think that tommy robinson was racist or is racist i think he was racist at one point of his life i think that he was indoctrinated as he says by these people to push an agenda but i think looking back now knowing what he knows i think that that man's probably seen the light a lot in regards to islam race and all and, and, and all the rest of those topics would you would you agree with that see what you should do is section this um what i was going to say is what percentage Right, of these Pakistani men in Telford involved in the grooming gangs. Let's look at the convicted ones, you know, because it's, it's out there in the domain. Now, what percentage of the convicted Pakistani Muslim gang members have actually picked up that book and read the Quran? Now, if, exactly. not, if, not, if, not, if not one of them has ever picked up that Quran and read the Quran, then with what I said, paedophilia is born in you. Now, this is where TR needs to separate. Not to, not, to, to me, it would be more stand up from him if he took Islam and pushed it to one side and left it and just dealt with the, the, the pedo-Muslim grooming gangs in Telford as a whole. And not look on the religion side of it because, from what I understand, these are dirty, dirty old men, right? Um, that are after a leg over, and it's being provided for them by another sick individual who's after money. Now, they've taken the opportunity because it's born in them, right? To recognize vulnerable young females and to use that to their ability to a to make money and b to satisfy somebody's sexual gratification disgusting so, so i believe that these these muslim grooming gangs right he's born in all of them because if none of them have picked up the crown and read the crown then you can push that to the side for starters, about what's been written in there. Um, because nine times out of ten, these are individuals that have got it born inside them. Um, and I can speak like this because I've seen a few programs where um, they've... In, in America, they've got a whole housing estate. And all they've done is put sexual predators on this housing estate every single house on the housing estate is full of sexual predators um three quarters of them are into young children and then the other quarter is um rapists right now there was a documentary um 
about this. And the documentary was made. Louis three. Louis three was it? I think so. Yeah. 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 Um, I've seen that. And it, it was actually produced by these these sick individuals, and there was five individual cases that they covered from members of this um, housing estate in America. And each and every one of them five said that paedophilia was born in them. And they believe there was one, there was one, there, there was one sick character um, that watches child porn. All the, all he's ever done, right, is watch child porn, but he's turned around and said he will never ever act upon his urges. Seen that? I think I've seen that. Right? Yeah, that's... Now, then, then, then there was another one saying um, he don't know how to control because it was born within him. That's all he's ever known, you know, to, to, to go after children. Um, and he believes that there is no drug and no cure out there for him, you know, to rig that out of him so that he will never, ever look at another child again. Now, this is where I can positively say that I distanced myself from that point of view from TR. Now, everything Kelsey's done, right, about the Telford Muslim gangs, bar a 1%, which is a couple of names that he mentioned, you know, that I I positively believe that, you know, he's, he's just listened to rumour on that case. Yeah, talk about this, Steve. I will, I, will this. I will get behind him on everything else that he's said. Yeah, I want to know about this, Steve. I'll give him a lot of fucking praise, even though yeah. I don't support him 100%. Yeah. I, I, I give him the praise and respect, right, for being the one man in the whole country, you know, that has stood up and highlighted, right, exactly what's been going on. He's felt it from the victims because he's interviewed numerous victims in the Telford case so he not only knows it and heard it and seen it but he's feeling it because that's what's come off the victims you know I, I believe he said that himself see before you move on to the next subject <laughs> about 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 uh, Tommy and about the, the certain things that he's he's the certain people that he's named do I uh, another question I have for you here do you think that because Tommy was involved in the EDL, the, the English Defence League, and that was considered a far-right group, just like Antifa is considered a, a far-left group. And I, I disagree with them too. Do you think because of that and the views that the far-right hold, do you think that that hindered him in his cause to the truth? Yeah. I, I, I believe that, yeah. I mean, because... I think there's another ten percent out there um, that have seen that point, especially when he's brought Islam into the equation. You know, um, because they are Pakistani men. Now, I'm hoping somewhere down the line he's aired um, these wrongdoers in Telford. You know, he spoke to numerous victims and he's he's actually helped these these victims um, by putting them in contact with organisations that will help them in their life, like, from here on forward. He's faced them, you know, to put the allegations and questions direct to their face, right? And he's, he, he's come from Luton all the way into Telford to confront these dirty individuals. Right, face to face. Now, there's no other man in the UK that's done that. Now, he's put his life on the line, his wife's life on the line, his children's life on the line, to support the cause of these these victims of the grooming gangs to Eric. So everybody in the UK can see exactly what these dirty characters are. Right now. I think it's hindered um, about 10% because of his past dealings with um, is it racist groups, if I say that, like the EDL. I do believe that 10% has been hindered 
because of the fact of um, his past. But not only that, but the way that he's dived into Islam and tried to bring Islam into it because they're Pakistani men. I think there's 10% being hindered because, because of that. Now, if I feel if he hadn't have tried to link that into these grooming gangs, then there'd be 100% behind him. So, yeah, 10% of his campaign has been hindered. I'll, I'll, I'll say you that. think he's seen this as all these people, all the this group of people, they're all involved in a massive pedophilia group, and this is what they believe, and we need to eradicate these people uh, from, from England. But actually, it's not that at all. The vast majority of them don't believe any of this here, and it's just a, it's a small minority of them that are doing this and um it's you know as i said he left the edl and he, he was the leader of the edl he left and he pursued this sort of documentarian sort of journalistic career and we'll actually we'll, we'll stay on the tommy robin subject for a second because you you, know, you do know a bit about it and it's good to get your thoughts on it so well, how do you feel like what's why are the bbc against tommy robinson why you know they seem to be running stories about him all the time, putting them in a negative light. I, 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 they... I think it's because he's such an outspoken person. To be to be honest with you, um, he's outspoken for telling the truth. Now, I know he, I know he's done a few other things um, in the in the, in his life. Football hooliganism. Yeah, that could be one of them. Yeah, I mean now. Yeah. I think the reason why the, the, the BBC hasn't touched and and open opened their arms to him, knowing full well that he represents the truth, I think it, it all boils back to his past about football hooliganism, racism. You know, sometimes sometimes these other people look at it that leopards never change their spots. <coughs> yeah. You know, I think this is a prime case with TR. You know that they're they're looking at it and thinking, oh, he's only got one agenda on his mind, and that's to go to go after and bring religion into it, um, and the racist element in in into this work that he's doing. You know, um, that's what I I I feel. You know, the BBC and all of them are looking at it that maybe he's a, he's a threat to to the the proper truth. You know, coming out. All right, there's there was a restriction ban. Um, looking back, when he went to jail for thirteen weeks, I think it was, no, three months. Now, he had the balls to get up, even though the court said there's restriction orders. He went to that court and he photographed um, them in the, in dirty individuals, you know, so the world can understand and see. Is this the contempt of court? Behind closed doors. Is this and the contempt our government, of... our government jumped all over him because he's because of probably his racist past. Is this is this the contempt of court issue that he had, and it wasn't. He was he was. What I know about that situation is he went up. Yeah, where, where, where we put him straight to where they put him straight to jail with no trial or you know nothing like that. It was in there three months, and then they just turned around one morning and said, uh, "Tr, you're going home now." I mean, well, that, that's ridiculous. The strange <laughs> thing about that, that is... That when he's done so much good. The strange thing about that is, right, is that he went up to film a guy or to the report on a case that was happening in regards to one of these guys that was in this sort of grooming gang. Mm. And he went up and I was it, he wasn't supposed to film, but they, they hit him with all the charges or he was well on his right to film or to report and they done him anyway. I don't know which one it was, but they put him in jail. They lifted him. They put him in jail. No trial, or there was a bit of a yeah. not a trial, but yeah, there that, was that's what I'm talking about. That one. There was hardly any court proceedings. They put him straight into jail. They put him straight into prison, and it was it was very very quickly done. And it was like they needed this guy off the street asap, which sort of indicates, regardless of what situation, it do, doesn't matter if he's an out racist. Doesn't matter if he is. Com, com, talking shit about everything to do that to a person indicates to me that it's another level of corruption it's like what they've done yeah. the net i'm not listen by oh, the way i'm not saying tommy robinson 
I'm not saying Tommy Robinson is that, that is government that is government corruption at its highest because for some reason I don't know why, but the police force and the government. Now you you would think that TR was doing an ace job and doing a proper a proper thing by photographing and letting the world know about these scumbags. You, you, you would. You'd be sat there thinking, this guy's fucking doing the right thing by letting us know who these scumbags are and what, what, what they've done. But for some reason, the police and the government want it covered up so that we don't know. But once again, though, is it because he went down the route of... He, like, he came on TV, he would come on TV with a Quran, and basically, I never heard... All I've heard him say is, I've had um, Muslim people at my wedding. Right. And to me, that's a bit of a cop out. You need to be coming out and saying, listen, I understand that the that the vast majority of these people, because there's like a, biz, a billion Muslims around the world, a vast majority of these people don't do this shit. But in this small country of Britain that he lives in, this small country of Britain that he lives in, there is a group of people that are predominantly Muslim that are running these gangs. Now, I'm not saying that they're all doing it. Why isn't the police force not taking more action? If this was a a Catholic grooming gang, there would be action took. Now, not in the past, but is this once again, or we find ourselves in a situation with religion overlapping the law? Because if you look at the, the Catholicism, right? You look at Catholicism in England and, and uh, Protestants even, doesn't matter, doesn't make a difference. There's been an infiltration of, of religion where they get to do whatever they want and um and because they are deep rooted into the law and into society into the sort of the police force and all and all different types of society that things get overlooked and there's loads of room for corruption do you think it do you think it's probably that do you know what i mean that it's not so much it's islam it's not islam that's doing that because as i say i've been to england i've i've, I've seen loads and spoke to loads of different um muslims and none of them or into that shit. If anything, any Muslim that I've ever spoke to, spoke to in England that I've spoke to for a while that says, well, do you, are you a practicing Muslim? They say, not really. I just say it to my mum and dad so to keep them happy. So it's like, what are we dealing with here? We're not dealing with systematic grooming of every child. We're dealing with certain spots in England that have a high grooming rate. And it just so happens that it's coming from certain muslim gangs but it's not every muslim in england no. see, that, see that's where now you're understanding that you can't use what's written in the quran because nine times out of ten I'll, I'll say to you that these muslim pakistani grooming gangs in telford they, they even even bother to pick up a fucking quran to read but i know i do stand by that I think this is purely and utterly about finding vulnerable young girls and using them to the ability that they think best, i.e. they're going to uh, groom them. And then sole intention is to get them pimped out to make money off dirty old men that haven't had a leg over in ages. I have to stand by the comments, though, Steve. If if there was a passage, I listen. I don't read the Bible. There possibly could be millions of pa or hundreds of passages in regards to weird Nazi shit. But and if there is, throw that book away to fuck. But I have to stand by it. If there is passages in that book, that certain book, and these people are very religious and they cling on to that religion and they go by the law of that religion, then, then. And there's a there's a passage in that book that sort of states that it's okay to go with children to have sexual relations with children. Yeah, but then every yeah, but every single person that's read the Quran will be going out and graping and abusing young girls. That'll be every single. So but you can't you can't really state right. that because yeah, every, yeah. every person of that community that's read the Quran will be going out listening to that scripture. And I don't and believe you do. <laughs> I would say it's. I would say it's like. I would say. I listen. I don't know. I'm not a, a statistics expert, but what I will say is, I have to stand by that. If it's in that book and people are defending that passage, then they have to sort of take a long, hard look at themselves because, in the reality of things, you're talking about children, 
just like if it was in the Bible, I would say, get that the fuck away from me. Just like, for instance, you're a Rastafarian, right? And their religion, you're allowed to smoke weed, right? I think, once again, I could be talking shit here. When you come to England, you come to Ireland, you come to Scotland, Wales, or whatever, you go to a country that isn't legal to smoke weed, you can't just open freely smoke weed out in the open. It's, you're, you're not allowed to do it because it's against the law in that country. So it's the same goes for the, any religion, Catholicism, Buddhism, uh, uh, Protestantism, it doesn't make a difference. What religion yeah, yeah, is the law if is the other. If that's the case, if these booming gangs are based on religion, then what's the excuse for the for the white population that are going out and doing exactly the same? But that's what I mean by that, because they, they hold a higher... Yeah, you, can't, you, can't, you can't say that that's religious-based. That's they. Um, I do believe... That's that where I think my argument comes in. That it, I, I believe it's nothing to do with Islam. That's just exactly. I don't think it's way of, of, of looking at it. This is like my way of. of I think that. I don't think it is. I don't think it's got anything to, to, to do with Islam. I think if you give men enough sort of rope to do whatever they want, then they will. They'll find you'll find corruption. There's corruption with drugs. There's corruption with human traffic and prostitution, child prostitution. You're going to get corruption in, in every avenue. And it just and I and I actually just touch on this too. If you think about this, right? If you're talking about so pre predominantly white Christian areas, you're going to get uh, Christian sort of nonces. In predominantly Muslim areas, you're going to get Muslim nonces. Do you understand me? So it's it's it, what we're dealing with here is you ju we just can't sort of pick on one group of people, and I I I totally agree with you. And I would I would near enough say that um, if you look at the way the Islamic community community actually live, they actually live better than the Christian community. They've got it sort of wrapped down a lot better. And I do I do feel that Tommy has been used as a pawn in some elitist game of chess. Um. See, I'm I'm hoping um, I'm hoping to see that Tommy Robinson, once he's um, accomplished um, everything what he's aiming to accomplish regarding the Telford grooming gangs, I do hope he's going to move on to the white grooming gangs. You know, just to, just, just, you well. just to balance the scales of justice to prove. You know, it's not just one religion or one class or one community of Pakistanis that he's going after. Mm -hmm. I know maybe that will look like 86% of the population. Uh, say for argument's sake, the population in, in Telford, say yeah. 80, 86% is Pakistani. Um, yeah. You know, he should probably help to air the white grooming gangs just to level up the scales you know of justice that will show that 10 percent that is that is misered by him only attacking airing and helping the victims of the pakistani muslim gangs to also do something about the white grooming gangs maybe why he's chose not to is maybe because the, the, the white groomers are individuals and not groups. Mm. You know, I think you'll find there's more Pakistani groups than what there are white, um, white yeah. grooming gangs. I mean, there, there, there's thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of white groomers, but they're individuals, not like a gang, as the Pakistani community um, have been attacking young girls. Maybe that's why. Good point, Steve. That's actually a, that's a cracking point there because if you look at uh, you know the the closeness of Islam, there's a, you know Islam's a very attractive to certain people because there's a closeness, there's a unity. I speak to a lot of decent people. Like one guy I know, Dan Vinny, he, he's 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 Muslim and he is the nicest, most gentle man that you would ever that you would ever speak to. So under no stretch of the imagination is this a dig at Islam. Let's listen. I'm just going to be honest with you. This is a dig at certain religious people in general because look at look at the Catholic Church. My God, the amount of children they have ruined over the years. Like I think in just uh, France alone, that they there was seven hundred thousand children 
that were abused just in France or something. Maybe it maybe it was seventy thousand, but there was a, a, a lots of children abused by the Catholic Church. Now, you, could you imagine Brazil, America, Ireland? Look in Ireland, they found bones of babies in, on the east coast of, uh, uh, or was it the west coast? I forget where I forget like, the exact place where it was of Ireland, where the where mother and babies' homes were priests ran and nuns ran this building and uh, children born out of wedlock were just seen as not even human and they were buried into the ground so uh, the catholic church has destroyed most of the uh, most of the planet in regards to history and look everything at, like that. Look, so, at the catholic, look at the catholic priests over here look how many have been done for uh going with young young boys yeah but but that seems to be like the the, the thing because the Pakistani Muslims have moved in the gang to abuse young girls. Now, the, the the white people that have been done by all these paedophile hunters and you know stuff like that, they seem to be like not so much in gangs, but they seem to be individuals. Now, maybe this is the reason why TR have specifically helped. Um, numerous towns and cities across the uk because as a statistic when you've got a gang of them working together um that will sh that uh, i think that will need more help than the individuals because the individuals are getting are getting slaughtered by the, the pedophile hunting groups so he's looked at that hole in the market and the hole in the market is Pakistani gangs. You know, that, I think that's how he's looked at that perspective to get involved in it in the first instance. Now, what's misered that a little bit is where he goes slightly off track and starts bringing religion into it. That's what's pulled me away and put that distance between him, me and him. That's why I've only gone by what I've seen and known um in telford than to listen to every single word what he said about the muslim grooming gangs in telford so basically i've followed my own path onto that um with being involved in it um simply by by these guys coming up and trying to put pressure on me to put pressure on my sister you know not to go to court um he's looked at it from maybe a whole point that no one's actually tackling um the, the muslim gangs the pedophile hunters don't seem to have any of the pakistani muslims of the gangs fall into their trap mm -hmm. now if he's looked at it from that point of view which i, I think maybe he has because because no one's actually gone out you know to air and help the victims of the gangs there's been more help for these individual guys, um, you know, by, 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 by I say again, the, the, the paedophile hunting groups. But not any of them paedophile hunting groups haven't gone out of their way to interact uh, with the Muslim paedophile gangs. Well, the thing about it is, if you look at those pedo the paedophile hunting groups, I just have to say, Steve, if you look at the paedophile hunting groups, mate, the vast majority of the people at this thing are just white white males. All right, there, there, have, there have been Indian guys and Pakistani men chucked into the equation and Chinese men chucked into the equation. Eighty five percent of the white males. It's been the mix. So he's only seen the hole in the market where these victims need help. It, you know, um, he's catered for that hole in the market. You could say. Um, you know to go after the gangs you know which again i'd split i'd have to split that in two you've got the gangs of the paedophiles working together and then you've got individuals i think it's a very small minority of people doing this in that group and i think what sort of gives tommy the ammunition is to say you can always point his finger at the book and say look it says it in this book there's a passage in this book but as I say, we can go through the Bible and go through loads of different passages and say, look at this, look at this and look at this. So I, I am actually starting to agree with you now that it's not 
the actual book. It's not Islam. It's just these sects of people that we need to sort of take religion away from it and go, look, these people are doing this, but it's not. It's only like 1% of the whole entire population. It's nothing to do with the other 99%. And the other 99% are, are good, honest, decent people. Do you know, I, I, I'm actually starting to come around because I thought to myself, maybe there's a, a problem with the, with the, you know, the books. Maybe they're, they're very, you know, they're very indoctrinated with the book and stuff. But I don't think that it's that at all now, listening to you and, and sort of understanding the, the, the sort of, what, what it's like on on the street level like but like you grew up in Telford you're or not you you come from uh, London but you grew up and you sort of lived in Telford for quite a long time and you know a lot of these people in regards to like certain uh Indians Pakistanis Muslims from all around the world have you ever came across any of this shit like or even indicated that any anybody's into this shit what you mean from the aspect of your friends that you hanging, know hang, hanging around with certain groups like yeah like within the pakistani community have i ever thought in my mind that these that, people yeah, could be or that, person, or this person or that person's been yeah. involved yeah um put it so i would have i would have known um if they were you know because that's how how much i've known these characters um and if i thought for one moment that any one of them that i hung hanged around with or had links with um you know i probably would have done something back then like to help if i could to, mm -hmm. you know and, and turn against them if i could um that's that's where i say that um when when he had the you know when he had uh, tr had the wall chart up and you could see the lines of the families and then he linked one family to another one by marriage mm -hmm. um i think that there, there was one 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 side of, of the tree he called it that there was hussein's there was the hussein's and What's the other family name it was another well-known like family <coughs> now I've, I've known i've known of the husseins and some of the family members like for many years um you know i've done so much to help them at points and like if i needed a favor i could get a favor you know for for how i've been towards them and the family and there was one of the names mentioned. Um, there was a name Harry that was mentioned, and his brother um, was one of them that um, had been accused um, of raping um, three three out of the seven of the girls um, that gave the information to TR now i don't know so much on the guy's brother harry's brother but well why and how he mentioned harry's name um when he was sim simply a person um that drove a car basically like me giving you a lift but i don't know um anything about you i'm only giving you a lift now he, his name was mentioned in the bad light a, his brother was the one that was accused mm -hmm. um by numerous girls um and you know for 100 percent sure that this guy wasn't involved in any of this so that sort of is a bit of an yeah, evidence and see see now the, the, these is, this is where i said to you like this is the one percent because Mm -hmm. There are certain names mentioned. I mean, I, 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 could, I could mention another name um, and I can positively tell you um, that he's guilty of sin and he should be in fucking jail mm -hmm. because his family members I've had a conversation with and this was when I first learned um, 
that he was one of the characters um, where the DNA of Defeated was. But yet he was never charged. He was taken in, had a few questions put to him, and it got NFA'd. Whereas I know, and the family members of his that I spoke to, and I told them, and I told him, I in fact even told him to his face, you know, what he what he was a dirty fucking scumbag. Um but yet he 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 was never charged. Mm-hmm. Now to me he you can't you cannot argue argue about DNA. You can't. Now yet this was a person, he was nineteen at the time it happened. And the girl was 14. And um, like I say, DNA was DNA was produced to the police. Um, he was questioned. And I do believe that he, he turned around and said that um, the girl lied about her age. And through through messages um the girl had said like she was 16 you know but if you looked at the individual you'd know clearly she didn't even look 14 right, right yeah. now now f- because of that one message right the police decided to NFA it. Now, this is what I don't understand, right? Um, why would the police NFA DNA evidence of an underage girl knowing full well the law says it's 16? Whether a complaint was made or not, that DNA <laughs> gave the police enough evidence to secure a conviction you know, without even the person having to go to court because the law says 16. If she lied about her age, it don't matter. Well, it's... I think you yeah. can think to yourself as a human, does she... If you think for one moment that that girl might not be 16, you run the fuck the other direction, you know? So the police could have automatically taken this case straight, straight to the, the CPS with the DNA evidence to prove that sexual activity took place between an underage person, whether she said about her age or not. I think there's a law against that, though, entrapment. I think there's an entrapment law. Like, there's an entrapment, and they do take into consideration did the person say they were of con- age of yeah, consent? Yeah but, yeah, but if the person knew, for a matter of fact, that she, she was under 16, which I believe he knew. He did. I'm not saying... I Listen, I know that the guy's a filthy, dirty scumbag. He, he knew she was underage, but... There was obviously a text message to say that she said that she What's to say he that. didn't say to her face <laughs> he sent me a text message saying that you're 16, so I have that. Do you know, there's so many things, but the police have to look at that and go, and they have to go by the law. But what they could have done is, is they could have tried a bit harder to get this guy done. It seemed to me they just couldn't be bothered with the paperwork or the, the, the sort of the time and effort to actually get this guy. Well, the, the, the name, you're, if you look back on these documentaries... You'll see it's uh, the the name was a kill, mm-hmm. and there there was a picture of him splat splattered all over a sports car. Now, now you imagine after going through all that as a victim from the age of fourteen that this guy's groomed you, and all you ever see him is out in big flashy cars and you know Porsches and Maseratis. And, you know this and that, and flaunting it. Now, how how are you going to feel as a victim? I mean, from when that came out, and the first moment I knew, you know that it was him involved. Um, you know, I went through a I went through a, a few individuals, um, and then, like I say, I spoke to family members, and they they've got the same attitude as me. Yeah, so explain to the people... Explain to the people. Say to me, he should be in fucking jail. Well, explain to the people then 
um, as a guy that's sort of friendly with a lot of these uh, Muslims, explain to the people how they feel about these gangs. Well, I can categorically say that family members of, I'm going to speak about the ones that are convicted as opposed to the ones that have had accusations only and they've been NFA'd, i.e. I won't talk about the TR ones where he's put the accusations of how many and who they are. I, I can I can openly speak better with the convicted ones. Now, the convicted ones, I, I, I can a million percent say that there's probably three three families that I've spoke to as regards to those that are in jail now for the grooming gangs in Telford. And to be honest with you, they, they would think how our mothers would think if we were in jail for that. You know, they're, they're disgusted. They're disowned from within the families. And they're disowned within the communities. And that's something that needs to be put across to all the rest of these ones that have had the accusations on the TR documentaries that have been NFA'd and got away with it. You know, they're they're going to be next some point down the line you know they're going to they're going to be next but the ones that are in jail and and, and have committed all these nasty dirty offenses i can kind of got, got agree say that their families are disheartened by them disowned by them and the communities disowned them because they're the ones that are giving the bad light to islam they're the ones giving the bad light to the, the pakistani community now, if they were to let one of them back in their community when they finish their sentences, that's just going to open the doorway for um, not the racist people, but the people who already feel badly about the Pakistani community because of the events. They're not going to open that gate. They're going to shut that gate and say, get the fuck. You know, you're not part of our religion. You've you've chose that over your religion or your family or your community. So they, they are not going to be wanting them people back in the community because what they've done is dirty their community, basically. Um, that's how they're looking at it. Now, it's, it's as for the ones that have been accused by TR, that have been NFA'd, um, I'd say that's split 50-50. You know, some of them are looking at yeah, you're a dirty cunt, you are. Don't ever fucking come around me again. That's their attitude to their mates or their their cousins. Mm -hmm. um, because the Indian and Pakistani community are different to us. You know, we, we're probably not as close as a, a family would mm -hmm. be as compared to what they are. Yeah. Um, so from, from the respects of Bar two names on that TR documentary throughout the whole of the documentaries from one to four. There's only two two names on there um, that I've found that he should never have put into the them documentaries. As for the rest of them, yeah, he's got it spot on one one hundred percent. You know, do you, th you think it's because of the limited resources the guy has to work that he's going to get things wrong? And that's essentially what the plan is for maybe the BBC well, and all the rest of them is to sort of well, I, I, let's, I make, let's make it let's make it hard for this guy to work so he will get things wrong. And when he does get things wrong, we can discredit his whole work. Possibly. Or um Or, or it could be over exaggeration. I'm not. I'm not saying it is over exaggeration. But when you've got when you've got seven girls naming naming um, fifteen individuals four times over, and these seven girls haven't talked amongst themselves, but they're all naming the same people. You can't get that wrong. You can't get that wrong because if them seven young um survivors have mentioned 15 individual names and each one's mentioned them more than four times say 
Yeah. Um, then they're not lying. They're not over exaggerating. Mm hmm. Um, no, I get what you're saying. And there's another thing. There's another thing I have to yeah, you have to actually speak about this. There's a lot of so for instance, there's a lot of these a lot of these gangs are actually connected to the Middle Eastern sort of ISIS and the Taliban. And there's a there's a disconnection between the decent people, the decent sort of Muslim people, the 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 vast majority of them, the ninety nine percent of them that live in the 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 UK and Ireland and and Western civilization that don't have that connection to the Middle Eastern sort of ISIS and Taliban. But there is a common theme that the people that are doing this, sort of the grooming gangs and the, the sort of the bad, sort of the underbelly of, of who they are, they're actually connected to ISIS and the Taliban. Is Would you agree with that, that there, there is that sort of, uh, there is that connection between them? Um, to be honest with you, I'll... I'll... I'd have to say I'd have to look into that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I haven't seen any connection to such groups. Because over um, in the middle, I mean, without them. looking at it, without yeah. like, going into it for like six months to, you know, to look into that side. Um, well, the reason why I say that, I'd have, have, have to say probably not. Well, the reason um, why I say that is because over there, for instance, if you looked at the takeover of Afghanistan. Uh, the Taliban just took it over again after Joe Biden pulled out all his troops overnight. Um, and what happened was that whenever he done that and he left them $80 billion worth of weapons and he left them a list of all the people that helped them in the country at the time, the Taliban came in, uh, split guards from boys, and a lot of guards are now used as sex slaves. And some of these guards are, are as young as, I don't know, uh, four years of age or whatever, eight years of age, very, very young ch children. And a lot of these guards are used as sex slaves. So, you know, to me, the you know, what is the common denominator there? Well, yeah, over in the Middle East, you have the, the sort of very, very staunch religious views. And then you have sort of, um, and, you know, obviously it's connected to Islam. And then the good Muslims of that country or ha have to live underneath that dictatorship where rape's fine, Beheading's fine, public killings are fine, and then you come over to Britain and Ireland and Western civilization, and you're seeing certain groups of people in this religion that are sort of the very, very, very small, minute uh, groups in this religion, sort of attached to grooming gangs, and like, like the whole, uh, the whole Saisha, what do you call that that girl that went? She went over to fight with ISIS. Oh yeah, the one that went over to ISIS, young, and then she tried to get back in the UK. Well, people, I have to actually oh, yeah. talk about this. I have to actually talk about this, and people don't realize, right? Is that she went over there? She was groomed here, and then went over there, and that's no different from uh, a white girl being groomed and and took and taken over to America to some religious compound to be used for whatever means necessary, whatever way they feel they want to use her. And people were like, oh, no, don't let her back into the country. I was like, no, no, let this woman back in because she is a she's a woman now. And she's realized that she has been groomed and she was brutalized. And God knows what else, because, you know, this is what people don't realize is that there's the decent, hardworking people of Britain and Ireland and Western civilization, regardless if you're Muslim, Christian or whatnot. They don't agree with those extremist views. It's like I'm Irish. Do I agree with uh, terrorism? No, I, I, I'm not involved with the IRA. I'm not involved with the UVF. They're extremist views. So people really need to understand that it's you know, as you say, you're on the ground. You're speaking to these people. They're not. They're not bad people. They're they're just normal people, and they're actually disgusted at the thought of these gangs. Um. See, I'll I'll, I'll touch on that one subject like you said about that that young girl that went over to fight for ISIS when yeah when she was like 15 years old um yeah she she was groomed obviously in into um being be, being a terrorist and fathering kids to 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 a terrorist and then years later she wants to come back to the UK I mean I think my, my attitude on that one would be she's been groomed by the terrorists. What's not to say that she's still being groomed to come back to the UK and, and, and to have contacts in the UK and 
before you know it, you know, she she's a leader of a, a, a group within London, say, to go and blow up, say, Liverpool. For security reasons, I probably would have said, um, no, you, you know, once bitten, twice shy, you know, you can't go over and fight for them and then you want to come back to us. Um, no, you're not getting back into the UK. But then you've got to look look at it from the other side of the point of view, which is yours. And it'll be, well, you know, she was groomed. Now she might have seen sense. Um, and now she wants, like, the good life. You know, let, let her back in. You know, so I think that, that's a split decision down the middle on that one because our country's only looking at it from the point of view um, of a security risk to the country. Um, We're seeing like, her as a brown lady that's Muslim. We're not seeing her as a child that was groomed in the UK and sent over to the Middle East to fight with ISIS or to be a sex slave for ISIS. That's what we're not seeing. If that had been a white girl that was sent over to America to some crazy Charlie Manson religious compound where they're indoctrinated and used as slaves, we wouldn't have any qualms about helping that young girl. But what we're looking at, we're looking at the color of her skin and we're seeing that the fact that she's Muslim. And that's, I can, I have to disagree with that. To be, to be different from the opposing, from the evil. For, like, for instance, for good Christians to be... Uh, be different from bad christians we can't be like bad christians we can't it's the same for islam it's the same for buddhism on protestant protestant catholicism whatever we have to be different and we can't just say no go back to them and be brutalized and used no come back i'm not saying take her back and let her run free into the population the conditions are for the you next know, keep an eye on over and the next 10 years of your life you have a handler that writes down everything that you do and because that you have chose or you not chose but you were in that scenario unfortunately we have to make sure that you're not affiliated with any terrorism but yeah you are british and i and we we do have empathy for you so, and this so, is a maybe, point of human. So maybe what our government could have done is you know let her over on a probation period like you say keep keep tabs on her you know put certain conditions in place and after a, a, a probation period, then reassess the risk. You know, after six months, reassess the situation and see if she's still high up on the security risk or if it's lowered and, and, and then make a decision and choice. Well, you're never going to know, Steve, because these people, some of these extremists, like religious extremists, nationalism extremists, you know, like the IRA, UVF, you know, the, the Taliban, ISIS, um, all any all the militias around Africa and all the different type of paramilitaries around the world, these people will go to any lengths. They will spend 20 years of their lives pretending to be somebody that they're not just for that one moment that they could kill a load of people that they don't like. So it's not about, do I believe that she is coming back here to gain information to bring it back to ISIS? No, but it's possible. Is that chance that she, that's what she's trying to do so i would say i it doesn't matter if it's for the next 10 years or 20 years we have to have empathy for the fact that she was groomed at a child we have to take it from that standpoint but what we what what we can't do is is allow that person to just be run freely around the streets that person has to be telling you where you're going it has to sort of like a register that you have to yeah. always make sure where this person is uh there's a handler that sees her every day there's something something but at the even, end, like, even like a tag like, for six months, stick her on a tag for six months and monitor her movements and who she communicates with. And at the end of six months of a trial probation period, then reassess it. You know, if, if they feel that she hasn't done anything, uh, she hasn't put her foot out of place, you know, give her a chance. Well, once you know, again, maybe, yeah. the, maybe the government needs to start looking at second chances. Well, once again, yeah, they, it's, not, across the board. it's not just about second chances, right? Because there's a lot of people out there that don't deserve second chances, right? Mm -hmm. Real terrorists that don't deserve second chances. But um, a lot of people will be listening to this and thinking, well, actually, hold on, that's not worth the taxpayers' money to do that because they've made that choice. You see, we're coming from the standpoint here that this this child has been groomed and sent over there. If this was yeah. a choice, if this woman was, if this was a woman 
and went over there 20 years of age and chose to fight for ISIS. There's no way I'd be saying let this person back in. But the fact that it's a high possibility, like high 90, 99% chance that this young girl was groomed as a child and then sent over there to be a slave for these people and then realized and found a way back. I think we should have a bit of empathy for that. But I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't be as lenient as you, Steve. I would monitor this person for the next 20 years because this person could be siphoning information back to ISIS, could be, do you know what I mean? I would have anybody that she wants to, like if, she, if, if there's family members want to come and see her from a different country, it has to be a massive no-no because you don't know who's coming in because they could they could be terrorists because of who she was affiliated uh, with once. So it's it's a massive. No, I, I agree with you. No, I mean, if it, like you say, if it was a, a fully grown woman who decided to go over yes. there, right, yes, yes, completely different. You know, she's made the choice. Yes. Whereas maybe this other young girl at the time didn't have that choice. Yes. Being being the kid, like you say, I agree with you hundred percent. They groomed her into going over. One hundred percent. So each case should be dealt with by the government individually. And not just a straight no. They need to start looking and thinking, well, hold on a minute. Think the same way Ronan does. You know, she was groomed from a young age. Um, stick her on probation, put a tag on her leg, track her communications, you know, and let her prove to, to us, you know, that she's worthy to stay in the UK. Even put her in jail. Say, put her in jail. Say, no, <laughs> it's... Put her in prison. As prison's better than being in a, a sort of a, a sex slave for some crazy weird cult, ISIS cult. Put her in prison for a while and 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 or even a psychiatric unit or something. So this this person sort of looked after because it's better than where she is. And um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a few of these wee podcasts. We went off in mad tandems today. We talked a lot about Tommy Robinson. We talked about um a whole vast range of subjects there. Um, none of my podcasts are structured. I just like having the, the crack with people and actually talking about good topics like this here. As I say, me, me personally, myself, I don't think that it's a deep rooted in Islam that these people are grooming. No, I think it's a very small minority of them. And I do believe that Tommy Robinson, if he if he if he could do things differently, he probably would. I think he was a pawn used in an, in a latest activity. Um, I appreciate Steve coming on because he's got good knowledge on this subject and. You know, thanks, thanks, mate, and hopefully you come back on and uh, do more of these talks with me. Well, um, like I said, when we done that first one, I mean, I knew there weren't going to be enough time to cover, you know, like all, all of the subjects that we wanted to in, in the space of an hour. I mean, so, you know, by spreading it over, say, like three episodes. Yeah. Um, you know, we can cover um, aspects that we haven't covered. Yeah, yeah, of course, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's good to have these talks. Another two episodes, say, for argument's sake. I mean, yeah, yeah. And as we'll be talking about a whole range of talks, there's always going to be an area I'm going to have questions, for, and there's always going to be an have questions you know, to put across. And, yeah, 100%, uh, man. Like, we don't, we don't always have to talk about these things. We'll come on and we'll do a whole vast range of topics. Um, that is the end of the podcast. Um, it's fantastic to have you on, Steve. I appreciate that. I really enjoyed that talk tonight. Um, but guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Remember, smash that yeah. like button. Jump over and subscribe to Steve's channel. The link for that will be in the comment section of this video. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. Peace.